Israel. This is another beautiful first day of the week, and uh, it's a uh, it's our Blog Talk Radio show, and we have some issues we got to deal with today. So I'm glad everybody is here. You know, we have a really serious issue that we need to deal with today. Let me get my calls on the line so that we can uh, get started. Shalom, brother Donia. How are you? I'm good. What did I do? You didn't do nothing. You know what? I'm so glad you're here today because. There's some things we need to address, and I'm glad that the people that are here are here. Um, I, I'm just trying to gather my thoughts to see how we're going to start this. Um, I got an email the other day. Matter of fact, I've gotten a couple of emails, and they've been from women uh, about the nation of Yehuda. And I think that it's something that we need to deal with and put on the record because our nation needs some serious help. They really do. They they need some, our people need some serious help. And the reason why I say that is because as the people begin to wake up, the very thing that is drawing them away from the other groups are drawing them here, and that is the abuse and the things that they have to suffer from some of these people. Um, and I, I just I think that we need to try to deal with why Israel is so abusive. They're verbally abusive. They're mentally abusive. I don't understand where the abuse is coming from. And everybody claims they love Yah. I don't understand that, how you can separate the two and, and still be abusive at the same time. So, I mean, you know, and this is one of the reasons why we started the men's class, and it really looks like we need to start a, a women's class, period, because we we need some serious help. I mean, really serious help when you can identify how people conduct themselves and say they're Israel. You know what I mean? I understand, um, Sister Yaya, but I want you to understand this here, is that we're dealing with a people that is broke. I'm talking about physical, mentally, and morally. You understand? And they're going to come up with stuff. We got to be big enough to sidestep that stuff and keep it moving. My, my sentiment. I mean, I agree with you 100%. You know, and I, and I do, I do, I agree, but sometimes people don't see themselves. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, let me give you, for instance, and I see you, Eric Cole 913. I, when I first really became conscious of Israel on YouTube, I was so excited to see the brothers out on the street corner. I was so excited to see our black men on the street corners preaching with a Bible in their hand, telling everybody that they were, they were Israel. But then when I got into it and I really started looking into it, it turned into like a turf war, almost like one battling against the other one, one calling each other names, one making fun of each other's wives. I mean, I, I, I pulled up something the other day where the, one, of the man, one of the men was making fun of one of the other camp leaders' wives. And I'm like, wow. Real, I mean, these are the people who claim to be representatives of Yah. I don't understand how they can see themselves that way. And sometimes, just sometimes, you have to pull the wool off of the off the wolf because these people are wolves in sheep clothing. Sister Yaina. They really are. Yeah, Sister Yaina. You know, see. no respect. They don't respect each other. They don't have any love for each other. And look, if you don't agree like I do and you don't think exactly the way I think, then you have to be this, 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 and this. And it's just no middle ground. It is like either you either you believe what I believe and think the way I think, or you trash. Sister Yaina, you understand? We, you know, you can't keep giving those people the oxygen and let them suck all the oxygen out. You won't. You understand? If you if you pay it no attention, it goes away. You understand? I mean, we can't we can't let allow those little things. I mean, let me let me explain something to you. This is the Almighty, you understand? We now are purging out the rebels from amongst us as part of it. Yeah. They're not going into the wilderness, you understand, because of their arrogance and their, uh, you know, pompous attitudes, you understand? So we have to understand, you understand, that 
We can't keep giving them guys the oxygen and let them suck up all the oxygen out of the room. That don't leave you to talk about the real the real problems that we have. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me open up. I agree. I mean, I agree with you, but it's just sometimes, brother, don't, especially with the females, because the females are the ones who really do. I've never heard the guys say anything unless they're, they're putting the females up to it, but the females are really the ones who do it. And psychologically, somebody has to be able to, to tell these women, you know, you have to tone all that down. Because for one, and I'm not, I understand about the energy. I do, I understand about the energy. But if there's never anything said, people will always feel like it's okay, and it's not okay because it makes us look bad as a nation. You know what I'm saying? As a group of people, because when they look at them, the first thing they're going to say is, oh, you one of those Israelites, and we do everything in our power to try to present ourselves a way in love. And you know what I'm saying? We, we, we are messianics and non-messianics alike on this call, and we, we love one another, and we grow together, and we do what we want to do, but it's like you have to, these people are vicious with their mouths. They're vicious. They represent God, and they're vicious with their mouths and their approach, and I'm talking about women. Women, and, and you know what? It's like, come on, if we're going to be girls and we're going to be ladies, let's be ladies. Because it's a way to say anything, but you can always tell the abusive ones because it is it's crucial. I'm serious. And, it, and it's something, if we're going to change the perception of who we are, we need to start changing it now. Because those are the, those are the cancers that are uh, among us that will cause more division than anything else at all whatsoever. And, and you know, and it's, it's just terrible. And it's, I don't know. Let me open this. My area code 913, your mic is open. Go ahead. Oh, shalom, shalom, my dear sister and brother. How y'all doing today? Hey, how are you? I am good, I am good. And I'm, I'm coming in because this is a problem that we're trying to address in, in mental health. Now, I'm, I'm no longer in mental health, but I'm saying this because there's a thing they're trying to debunk the Willie Lynch letter in our community and if you go back and you look at that letter and you, you understand the contents of it, a job has been done on us, and we know this is a spiritual problem, those of us with the spiritual mind. But when mm -hmm. you think about how we come at each other, and you go back to Genesis 3.15, as that was foretold, the enmity, you know, uh, amongst our people, you, you have to start with that, and we just have to tell everybody the solutions exist in the Holy Scriptures. You know, right. and they're dirty. You, you know what I'm saying? So when we get when we get upset with one another, and we go back to square one, it's almost like we forget our spirituality, and and we get down and and dirty, and the you know just just grind it out, and we let that thing hit us to where we, we're gonna have to debunk that letter. And I'm gonna tell you, it's it's a job done on our people, and it, it's a shame. To say that, I'm not trying to justify it, because each person, one by one, has an opportunity to just turn this around. But it's going to take spiritual counseling for our, our people as a group to help them to understand the psychological warfare that's been imposed upon us. So that, that's not giving anybody an excuse, but I mean this with, with the most sincere heart. And we're going to have to get that Willie Lynch letter and go deep into it and help people to understand why they're reacting and tearing each other up. There's a self-hatred that is yep. expressed like, and if you don't understand the mental health issues in that Willie Lynch letter that's putting us there, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll just not understand. And the question becomes, how do we heal? You know, exactly. and my answer to that is, and I'm going to hang up here in a second by, the, by following the laws, the mandates, and the statutes. If we come in at each other super hard like we have no respect for ourselves or the person we're addressing, you know, the job that's been done on us, and a lot of us don't even know it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I agree with you 100%. I agree with you one, And it's an issue we have to deal with because it, yes. it, 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 people think it's okay, and it's not. Okay, let me, I want to read. I want to read something to you. Why I brought this to to to, to the forefront? I, I really do. And the reason I want to put this on the record because 
uh, you know, I usually do this when we are dealing with something of this magnitude. And um, I received an email from a young lady who said she wanted to be a part of our class, and I, I think she attended one of the classes, and this is what she sent me four hours ago. She says, I am no longer interested in your Bible study or any other means of affiliation with your wicked organization. Your classes are horrible and an abomination to the Most High. I thought this was an organization that loved and honored the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You all are a bunch of idolatrous idiots. Please remove me from your contact list. What a shame. The Most High is one. Remove my name and number and email from any of your organizational files. I do not want to be affiliated with you wicked liars in any form or fashion when, when the Most High comes back. And she left her name. I'm not going to give her a name. But my thing is, and like I sent her back, I sent her back a very decent email, and I told her, you know, it's a shame that we can't address each other the right way and agree to disagree. Because you don't have to agree with the things that we say. But to come at us to the point where you tear us down and call us all kind of names, that's a form of abuse. It's verbal abuse. It's a form of abuse that you have to see that is, that, that's inside of you somewhere that you have to deal with. And I told her this is exactly why, as a nation, we can't come together. It's because when we don't agree with what you say or we don't agree with what I say, then all of a sudden the, the gloves come off and we get to banging at each other. But you can go to work every day and get along fine with the boss and you can follow the rules and you'll mumble it under your breath and you'll do what you need to do. But Israel, as a nation, we are going to have to stop tearing each other down because if no, we, we get nowhere that way. We just get nowhere that way. And I politely told her we would be more than first time on our class. That's the first time on our show. But because she heard something that she didn't agree with, it brought out the vicious response. And I told her, you don't have to be vicious. There's no reason. If you don't, if you don't agree, then agree to disagree. It's simple. Well, let me ask a question. Let me ask say this, if she's on the line today, and then I'm going to just put myself on mute, if she's on the line today, understand this is why our community is fragmented. And unfortunately, a lot of us don't know how deep this thing goes. But when we look at this uh, mentality, uh, it, it was foretold that the Willie Lynch letter would propagate itself for about 300 years from the time, you know, of the slavery. So it's unfortunate that we do this dog-on-dog -dog kind of hate thing, and then we are often going off of our feelings, and it's going to take some real serious mental health, spiritual counseling of our whole nation, where yeah. we're going to have to do the souls one by one, and this is a problem that professionals, now they're out here professing to be professionals, and they have solutions, but... The counseling is one-on-one, -on -one, and we're going to have to clean each other up one by one. But out of love, you know, we say to this dear sister that if something was said that she didn't understand or it didn't line up because we use a principle, and everything, wow. as you said, has to line up on line, you know. Mm -hmm. It has to be the principles that line up. You know, here a little, there a little. We look mm -hmm. at the testimonies of the prophets, and I'm, I'm talking to anyone that would have that mindset, because in our families, it's sad, but our families are so fragmented, this is not just something, we don't know what ticked that person off, but you know, you look at postal, uh, the postal worker they talk about, where somebody can just hear one little thing, and it's the straw that broke the camel's back, we never know, and we're not here to be mental, mental health counselors, but I'm telling you, that it's going to take a serious uh, a teshuvah, repent and return to the Most High so that we can address and resolve some of these. I heard somebody else coming on, so I'll shut up. Yeah, I, I, just I, want to say, and I agree with you, uh, 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 um, uh, Emmanuel, but uh, let, me, let me ask a question here. Did she, she say what the problem was? No, if she, she didn't. Said, if she didn't say what the problem was, then, you know, she can't make, she can't, you know, she... What, what, what I'm seeing here is is that we are so fag, fragmented, broke, you understand? Uh, um, we have lost uh, moral fiber, you understand? Some, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 our, our spiritual standings, you understand?
environment and um, and emotional. We, you know, emotional. All of those things is in that Willie Lynch letter. You understand? But the thing is, is that you know, if you're not willing to talk about what the problem is, then you need to keep it moving. Because what happens here is, if we doing what we say is we're doing, I mean, in, in the nation of Yehuda, you understand? And we doing pretty, we doing pretty well, you understand? Yeah. Uh, and they got a problem with that, then they need to state the problem. But if we feel like we're doing what we need to do, you understand, then we need to, to disregard that and let her get her own program, you understand, or them get their own program, you understand, because I think that we're doing pretty well. Out of the blue, here comes somebody, you understand, uh, 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 and, and she had not said what the problem was. You understand, oh. if, she said what the, if she said what the problem was, then we need to address what the problem is, but but uh, to 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 to, to malign, malign you understand a certain people. I mean malign the, the organ whole the whole thing. You understand and not talk about it. You understand and if you don't want to talk about it, then you need to get your own program. Because I think we're doing pretty well. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and you know I'm coming to you, Eric Code three five two. I'm really coming to you. And you know that's what I'm saying as a nation of people. You know, we have to stop trying to blame other people because we have to look at ourselves and say, wow, maybe I am abusive in my conversation. And it's just not her because I don't want to make it seem like we just coming down on her. But us as a group, when, when you click that YouTube uh, uh, button and you type in Hebrew Israelite teaching, you got all kind of stuff that's coming up from everywhere. And, and, and some of it is very, very good. They get into our historical background. They can tell us how we are a nation of people. They get into some of the teaching is very good. But on the other hand, they use it as a platform to tear each other down. And it's like, you know, at some point, we have got to say, if we're going to move like God said we're supposed to move, because it's too late in the game for this kind of stuff right here. You move like God say you're supposed to move, you have to stop tearing each other down so we can get where we're supposed to go. I mean, I'm serious. I looked at a clip. I pulled up one of the brothers, that's one of the camp leaders, and he was, he was hugged up with his wife. And someone made a derogatory statement about the man's wife. And I'm like, wow. But, we, but we're supposed to be the people that are supposed to teach the other people how to love y'all. Mm -hmm. Let's start but again, before, I, before you open the door, open up, uh, what's the name? I want to uh, see what you expect too much. Expectations. We're putting too much expectations on the people. You understand? You expect, you understand, because we find ourselves that everything's going to turn around just like that. It doesn't happen that way. You understand? You know, if we got to work at it just like we got we, we got into this circumstance. We, we was flung into this circumstances. Now, but we're going to have to understand our thing. And we can't let these little, little uh, uh, indiscriminately little things bother us. I don't care if it was two or three people that said certain things. You understand? Know Left comments, man. You understand? Know if they they need to bring the comments to the floor so that we can fix it. You understand? Know we can't fix it if you're gonna just um just just give the derogatory uh, stuff. You understand? Know you know. So you know. What I'm saying? And if you're not willing to bring it to the floor, then keep it moving to someplace else. That's just my opinion. All right. I mean, brother Lynn. I mean, brother Lynn and brother uh, Emmanuel. I'm coming three five two. It's just something I tell you. Eric code three five two, your mic is open. Go ahead, you're on the air. Hello. Um, good Hello. everybody. Yeah. Um, I'm here with everyone of you on stand and everyone has a very good point. But the thing that we have to be mindful of is that the enemy he comes in and he wants to destroy and upset the house. Yeah, that's true. And we have to be we have to be careful and mindful of, of, of the, the enemy's tactics. And, and we'll find a lot of uh, things going on with, within the house. And we can't act like them, and we cannot be like them, and um, because it's going to destroy us. So we have to set our house rules. 
I know of all of the and things that I have been in contact with. There are conflict, there's strife, and there's bitterness in the house. And they disconnect with one another, and, and, they, and, and they have no respect for one another. They're representing one another like they're little children, have no respect. And so that's something that we have to be very mindful of. So we got to make sure that our house here, in, 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 in this particular where we are in, that we set the rules, that we have that respect in our house. So that won't carry out beyond our house into someone else's house. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. I really do. Like you said, bring it to the table. You know, if, even it. if it's something that you disagree with, bring it to the table and we'll deal with it. But you know what? No one wants to be, they don't want to be uh, confrontational. They're not confrontational. They hide behind emails and they can do those things and hide behind the email. But bring it to the front because guess what? We all here. That's why we have this open forum the way we do. We don't hide anything. We don't do anything in the secret. And it, like I said, you know, if we've offended you in any kind of way, because I'm sure we haven't, because we put all of the, the classes online for everybody right. to hear. And if it's something that you were offended by, bring it to the table. You know, but nobody knows how to respond appropriately. See, this is my thing. I, get, I look at it like this. Nobody in Israel can be professional when it comes to Israel. But when the time comes for us to get up in the morning and go to work where we know we're going to get that paycheck, we put on our clothes, we put on our suits, we, put on, we carry our briefcases or whatever we do. We go into these establishments and we sit down and we are at our best behavior, at our best. But then when it comes to Israel, we treat each other like crap. Yeah, because we don't have no, no, uh, cause, cause we don't have, uh, uh, no, uh, pull on that job. See, we can work, see, they can walk away from this. You understand? They can say this here and cut, and cut us down, you understand? And they can walk away. So this is why I say, in the nation of Yehuda, man, we got to pay, we got to be bigger than the next person. And we got to be able to, uh, state our case and let it go. You understand? Because if they're not going to, if they have a problem, they have a problem. You understand? And if they're not, they're, if they're not going to bring it to the table, you understand? And so that we can talk about it and discuss it, maybe we can fix it. You understand? But if they're not going to do that, man, keep it moving. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it, but it, what it does, Brother Donia, it leaves an open wound. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, look, we don't want to put a Band-Aid over a bullet wound. Let's sit down and talk about it and come Come, let's sit down and have a conversation about it. Since, it's, since, it's, since you refer to the whole organization as a whole, come, let's talk about it. We can put it on the record and we can have a conversation. But the thing that gets me is nobody's willing to do that. They, they, they hide right. behind certain things because they cowards for real. They really don't want to do that. And like she said, it's probably the enemy using the people to do what they need to do. But like I told a young lady, we're about love. That's what we do. We, we're about love, and we love each other. Irregardless of what we agree or disagree on, we love each other, and we keep coming, and we keep it moving. But you know what? A lot of people don't want to be loved. They, they are lashing out because they're hurting. And the thing about it is if you're hurting and you by yourself, you don't have to be by yourself. You know, and it don't have to be that way. We can come together and, like you said, talk about the problem, forgive one another, and keep it moving. Right. Exactly a lot of people are hurting, and they, well, guess what? And hurting people hurt people. That's correct. Right. And and then the and then the Bible also speaks of you know we still have to continue to love those who despitefully use us, and uh, we yeah. we can't be comfortable them. But our biggest weapon, and the only weapon that we can have, is that. We can't become like them, but we have to learn how to bow ourselves and humble ourselves in prayer and begin to pray for these situations and things. Because if we reject that, it has to go away. And I think I've heard Brother Bill say that earlier. Once we start resisting that thing, it has to go. It, it will cease. So we just got to keep them in prayer. That's true. That's all. Let me open up Brother Leonard. Brother Leonard, shalom, shalom. Your mic is open. Go ahead. You're on the air. Um, PTSD. That's, that's the first thing, but um, um, I think they got a bad uh, understanding, of, a bad definition of what uh, being awake is, because you got people that drowsy, 
then, excuse my expression, you got half ass awake, then you had over that all awake. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> You to, but you, you know to, what you the problem is, Brother Leonard, is all of the people that are awake today, they scholars. They scholars. They scholars on everything. And no matter what you agree or disagree with, they will cut your head off if you don't agree with them. I mean, they cut the head, the snake, the, the head of the snake off at the hem, you know, whether you agree or not. And they're leaving people wounded. But they're talking right. about the love of the Most High at the same time. Right. And you cannot build and tear down at the same time. It doesn't work. And apparently they it doesn't don't know work. what Like I said, it hurts people, hurt people. And you don't know something you can't do better. They don't know what love is. They don't know how to do it. So they, they, they express their feelings, their emotions, the way they do, because they don't know how to do it themselves. So they got to put it on somebody else. Something is going on because, it's, like I said, in the majority of it has been the mm-hmm. women. Area code 540, your mic is open. Go ahead. You're in the air. Yes, shalom, shalom. Shalom. You know, young people, come let us reason together. How many of us, even as family members, and especially in the nation, are willing to sit or take the time and reason with an individual to find out why they feel the way they feel. Unfortunately, we cannot fix everyone. We would love to. We can pray for everyone. But there are people that you just cannot, you know, you can't even make them, even if they read the actual word, see the light. Coming into the light requires your eyes being open and your brain engaged. And many of us, sadly, we just don't want to do that. And there's so much opposition, you know, that people are just confused. What we need to do is pray for each other. And, you know, it might sound like a cliche or maybe sound bad to each other. What I'm going to say is we need to ask you all to help us to develop a thick skin because the, the closer we get to 2019, I just have a feeling that things are going to get a lot rougher than they are right now. But for us to hang in there and don't despair, yes, well, our feelings are going to get hurt. We're human. However, keep doing what you're doing because there are people like myself who are learning and who are growing and who are looking forward to this program, taking notes, researching, and finding more and more truth. So please don't be discouraged, anyone. Keep doing what you're doing. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. And you know what I want to do? I would really love to have some psychologists on staff of the Nation of Yehuda that would be willing to donate their time to be able to address these issues when we get emails like this for people to find out if they want help, to find out. Because, like you said, we don't know how to love. We, 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 most of the things that we have considered to be love is really lust, you know, and we've spent our whole lifetime making choices that was based off of, off of ego and flesh, you know, but when you talk about love, love extends all, love goes the whole nine yards. No matter what happens, love is there. That's how the Most High has loved us as a people. No matter what we did, the few of us that are left, in the millions and millions of us, he loves us to the point where he's not leaving us hanging. You know, and we are, we are, we are growing in the knowledge of who he is through the scriptures. You know, but sometimes we, I, I, just, I just wish that we could have some psychologists on on uh, uh, on staff so that they can deal with the issues of some of these people, you know, because people don't know how to love one another. And and I want and one thing that I am so proud of the nation of Yehuda about is that we have learned how to be there for each other in spite of. You know what I'm saying? As many things as we go through as a group, we are always there for each other. And and I think that some people don't know how to deal with that. They they. When they come to us, they think that we're on the level of a lot of different other groups when we are trying to do something that nobody else has ever done. And we're, we're successful at doing it because Yah has put his stamp of approval.
approval on it. You know, and it's like if you're hurting, you know, and, and you lash out, then that's a sign that you need some help. And I just, sometimes I just wish we had, you know, the people that would donate their time to just say, when you get emails like that, send them to me. Because it's deeper, it's a deeper rooted something going on for people to take the time to send stuff like that. You know, some of our people have um, are suffering from bipolar stuff. You understand? They've been in, indulging in that narcotics, and they got their they, they emotions all in, in disarray. So, and, and they want to try to they they reaching out for help. You understand? And so, but if they're not willing to talk about what the problem is, you understand? Then how can we help? I just want to know that. You know, how can we fix our, our situation? They said, I mean, the, the young lady, uh, that, the, the letter that you read, you know, that said that, she, that there's something that they don't like and they, they do with it, you understand? Know, you know, um, after you sent that letter, and in that letter, you understand, know, explaining, you know, explaining that we willing to work with him and other about to die, but if you still feel like you feel, I'd have put a good, a big, Double let double sized letter in there saying bye, <laughs> <laughs> brother. <don't. laughs> you, you all have to forgive. Him. <laughs> you have to forgive him. I'm so sorry. I mean, I understand what you're saying, though. I do. I understand. I do. I understand. I just hate to see us go through that. I hate to see us. I hate to see the men at each other's throats. I hate to see the women at each other's throats. We've been through enough. We have been made to do this to each other long enough. We have been through enough. They put us against each other, and we're still doing it, like he said, Willie Lynch today. We're still tearing each other down, but you'll go in that job, and you won't tear that boss down. You'll smile and grin and say, yes, how may I help you? Is there anything I can help you with? You're in your best behavior, but when it comes to us, we always tear each other down. Hold on, Eric code 913, your mic is open, Brother Emmanuel. But you know what they would tell us when we go to those jobs and smile at them? They would tell us, uh, they would write up in a report, here's a passive-aggressive brother or sister with explosive tendencies. I'd but see that wow. diagnosis, and that was on us. And the reason they would say that, if you go in and your attitude is such that they can't really pick you out, but you know what worked for me, and I'm going to say this, uh, when I purged jealousy, envy, hate, and vindictiveness, a lot of things turned around for me. Mm-hmm. Now, that, that Willie Lynch thing, it, it's not a lightweight thing, and it's going to take you right, the psychologist, to come out and help us. But at the same time, we're going to have to help them because the answers are in the scriptures. But it's mm-hmm. the whole entirety of the scriptures. We have to use the Apocrypha, you know, the Apocrypha. We have to use the Old Testament, the New Testament, and tie everything together so we can get the testimonies of the prophets as well as everything else, you know, to be line up on line. But I am so thankful that I had a start in mental health, and it, it gave me kind of, uh, it, took, it took my shades off so that I could see the real world. And when you look at individuals, the person that you see on a day-to-day basis, you don't know who's been abused out here, okay? You don't know who has been through what. So when we are able as an individual to say, yes, I have purged jealousy, envy, hate, and vindictiveness, then you can move on from there, whether it's Willie Lynch or whatever. You can move from that. But I'm asking psychologists to come together together so that we can have some kind of forum and, and put this together because we have, Yah has given us answers. It's just us forming as a unit to put it out there so that we can start to help heal our people. Hallelujah. That's true. And we got to, you know, I just want to help because it's like, you know, wow. I mean, what's really going on? I mean, wow. You know, what, what a nasty way to start a day. And wow, you took the time to write such nasty 
worse in an email when it, you could have flipped it off and did something the opposite. You could have said, hey, I enjoyed the program, a lot of stuff that I disagree with, but, you know, I don't think I'll be coming back, but thank you so much for giving me the opportunity for the platform. It could have went in that direction, but you took the time to be vicious with it, and it's like, you know, this has to be a norm for some people. Like you said, people, some people live in all kind of lives, they're getting cussed out at home. They're going through all kinds of stuff. And like you said, you have to take it upon yourself to change you. And, that, you know, and that's the thing that you have to realize. The power to change you is within you. That's right. Sometimes, sometimes mm -hmm. uh, uh, sisters and brothers, you understand, don't recognize that they got a problem. They don't recognize that. And they're going to continue on. But, see, when, well, here, here's what I say myself, you understand, if you gradually black back away from them and their family back away from them, sooner or later, they're going to say, maybe it's me, you understand, but you understand, as long as we keep giving them a platform to run that nonsense, man, you know, they're not getting no help, hallelujah. Man, I agree with you, you know, but it's just, we got to do something, you know, because it's, it's a nation that is destroying itself from within. It is. It, 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 we don't have to worry yeah. about nobody else doing nothing to us. We are destroying ourselves. Destroying but, ourselves. If you, but if you expected everybody just to, to uh, get in line, they're not going to do it. We are, we are broke people. Our people is broke, man. You understand? They've been chained. We're beaten, maimed, and murdered. You understand? Right. And we never got no help after sit, going through those things. You understand? So we be, you know, we're going to have uh, 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 disagreements with our own kind. You understand what I'm saying? But we must allow them to, man, that's what they want to do. But if they don't want no help, you understand, that they need to stop and go moving on. That's just my opinion now. Right. And right. Like you said, you know, a lot of these uh, generational curses, like you said, these people are ancestors that have been in a broke man's set talent, and they and it just passed on from generation to generation. They don't know any other way. Nobody there to teach them. Nobody there to instruct and guide them. And so they just continue to carry on the old curses that they had from the ancestors. And that's why they bring so much hatred from the hatred that they had from the things that they went through, the slavery, you know, abuse, the abuse the beatings and all that. So it's still something inside of me, and I don't know what it is, and I don't know how to handle it, but it was passed on to you from your ancestors. And they don't know how to deal with it, so they need help. And you know, one thing to think about with our people, when you look at, uh, some of you might remember how your grandfathers punished your parents, you know, to tie them or take a switch and beat the crap out of them and... Then some of our parents might have had us go out and get the switch and, and pass that on. Well, my point in saying that, I'm, I'm agreeing with what the sisters has just said, but when we were doing the mental health counseling, we would see that the divorce rate among all people was about 70%. It's high. And when you look at a divorce rate of 70%, you know, what do you tell somebody in a premarital counseling session when they say, well, what, am I, what are the odds of me making this work? And, you know, I, I couldn't tell them. I could tell them the statistical uh, data on it. But if they weren't willing to go through the spiritual counseling and to allow spiritual counselors to check on them so that when they came into problems, men, for example, you know, spiritual brothers like Brother Adonai, you have a problem with a sister well, hey, let the brothers counsel that brother because if the brother is uh, antisocial personality, well, maybe he needs to be set straight on, hey, you can't put your hands on that person or you right. can't put your mouth on that person the way you're doing. You know, you're destroying that relationship or say even the woman when, you know, four-letter words are expressed at the guy. you got kids listening to this and what are kids going to learn when they see two adults going four-letter, four-letter, four-letter at each other, and then kids go to school and do that same thing with the teacher or out of disrespect hit the teacher because somebody has said, don't let anybody, even your teacher, put your, their hands on you. So I'm yeah. saying this is a deeper than uh, we think, and like someone said, one of the places that we come 
because we have no power at work. Many of us have no power in our communities, and the only time we get a chance to rant or pop off on somebody is when we can do it when something is good. But mm-hmm. you'll find in a lot of the churches, what do they call it, so is it the liturgy or whatever, where people are looking for a set pattern to do a, a program or a church program or whatever. And what I mean by that is they want a, uh, A and B selection. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm pretty good at A and B selections. If you ever decide you want to have them, I, I, I would come on and do one with Brother Adoni. I, I do hear him <laughs> sing on occasion. But I think that if, if people understood that, okay, this is different, this is not your A and B selection, you know, we come and we have fun with this, and somebody coming out in left field, they might look and say, well, hey, the professionalism is not where it should be, you know, that kind of thing. So unfortunately, hoping that person listens because we're a community, and if we don't come together as a community, we're out here lost. And the way things are going and the end-time prophecies that have been fulfilled and the ones that are coming, we need each other now more than we ever have. And we've got to hang together and take each other's idiosyncrasies and just kind of take that and say, okay, well, that's that person's little thing. Let them be them. I'm going to let you be you, but you've got to let me be me as well. So if it doesn't jive with you, if it doesn't click with you, that's okay but don't abandon your spiritual community because we all need one another. Hallelujah. That's, all right, let me see. We got Eric O one one one. Your mic is open. Go ahead, turn on the air. Eric O one one one. Shalom. Shalom. Oh, this is Malcolm. I actually put um, pushed that by accident, but since I'm here. <laughs> I was listening. I've been listening since we got on, and um, I I don't know, cause I don't know. I got mixed. I got mixed emotions about that. And one of the reasons why is one. I mean, I get the whole Willie Lynch thing, but some of our people are naturally narcissistic. Everybody know everything. Everybody super spiritual. Ain't no regular people left. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and sometimes when you say stuff they don't agree with, they automatically give a negative response because that's what's in them. Well, where did right. it come from, though? You say that's what's in them. It had to come from somewhere because the baby isn't born negative. Well, let me, let me explain something. I don't to you know here. what brain chemical makes you narcissistic. That's just like, for example, the whole, and I'm going to just use this as an example because it stuck with me for some reason because I was like, wow, but like when OJ was in the car chase, they was doing a documentary on him, and the black people was around rooting him on and had the signs up, go OJ, and he riding in the Bronco, and he looked around like, what are these niggas doing out here? And the white guy looked over at him like, you want to? So he said, uh-uh, I ain't no nigga, I'm OJ. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know what makes people feel like they are all the way supreme to the point where they ain't regular. I don't know. I don't know what makes people like that. I got a question. My question is, is that if the woman did not, or those people, whoever, whoever sent you those emails, didn't voice their disopinion, their 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 uh, uh their grievance, you understand? Then how can we even be talking about this? Hallelujah. Be- because one, we all disagree. You know how we get, brother Donia. We all done had knockout, drag out disagreements, but it's never to the point where, well, I don't want to fool with you no more. I don't want to hear your voice. I mean, to me, that's elementary. I just, in my head, I can't even. Compute that don't even compute with me. I don't know. I don't know what ticked her off, but whatever it was, she couldn't speak her piece about it because she ain't put nothing else in there, and she ain't show up today. So, you know, I'm like you, keep it moving. Who cares? I mean, I don't want to say it like that, but me, my own personal feelings. I mean, I just step it off. I don't care. You're not gonna boy. I mean, we. but, But guess what happened? Let me tell you what happened. A lot of people do that because people don't pay it any attention. And they feel like it's okay. 
said, okay, I'm going to say what I got to say. I'm going to tell them off. And I know I told them off, and it's okay. And it's like, no, it's not okay. Somebody needs to let you know that's not okay for you to be right. able Some to people are plants, that. though, to ruffle feathers. So if they can right. cause discourse, like Brother Adonia said, and get you talking about it and get your feathers raff, raffled up, then mission accomplished. I did what I set out to do. All you got to do is send them a little email talking about their little stuff, and it goes down. You know what I'm saying? But it's not, it's not about me being, it's not about our feathers being ruffled or us uh, uh, giving it, giving it some, some energy. It needs to have some energy because this is something as a nation we do. And guess what? When they look at, they might look at a group, some other group. And because you say you're a Hebrew Israelite, you, you categorize right with that group. So if I had any time to take a platform, it is now to say, it's not acceptable because guess what? If we're supposed to be leaders and, and we're supposed to teach the other people how to love the most high Yah, how can we do that and they see us tearing each other down every chance we disagree with each other? I, got it. I, I got know, but you can please some of the people some of the time. You ain't going to be able to please all the people all the time. If you going to always have some people out there that, that's throwing knives at you. That's just how it is, especially when you're on an open platform, you on YouTube, you open yourself to the public, you opening yourself up to everybody and everything. Do the job have to be done? Yeah. Do you stop doing it? Nope. But, at some, I mean, because you can bring it up all you want to. It's been going on since the Hebrew-Israelite movement started, and it's going to go on till it's over. Okay, let me ask Whatever that means. Another question here is, what was what was her grievance? What was the problem that she was having with the with the nation of Yehuda? What is that? If that she didn't if, like what we the she, she didn't we like the way the we don't know. The, wait one second. If we know the problem, we can fix the problem. But if we don't know the problem, then she got a problem. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, I mean, we know that there's a problem there with her. She didn't like what she heard with what we were teaching. She didn't what was she what was disagreed that? with the things that we were teaching. But that's okay. That's what I'm saying. It's nothing wrong with disagreeing. You agree to disagree agreeably. But this turns into a vicious cycle. And it's like, when are we going to see that we're not accomplishing what y'all wants us to accomplish as a people, that we're doing more damage to each other than we're doing good. And when, because I'm like the brother, Emmanuel, some people don't know how to love. And they think that just because they dress up and they put garb on and they go stand on the street corners and they say, those same people you got to come back by one day. And them, them same people might have to give you a piece of bread one day. You have to be careful with the things that you say and how you say what you say. And everybody has this hardcore mentality like, ain't nothing going to happen to me. I'm with y'all. Y'all going to make sure I'm all right and I'm going to be y'all's henchmen. And, we gonna, and it's like, no, you're, more, you're in a more dangerous situation than the heathen is. And, you know, right now, you know, this conversation we are having right now, and all the issues we do is, is they're up strife, and then they sit back and want us to ask that us, you know, let me see what they're made of and how they're going to handle this. People do things for all kinds of crazy reasons, and that's how the, uh, the enemy uses us they have to fall into their trap, so. Yeah, I mean, but it needs to be addressed. I'm serious. It does. Let me get yeah, some air code 513. Your mic is, I'm sorry, sis, are you finished? 352? Yes, I'm just saying, you just got to pray. Because we in a time now that we need to pray more than we ever prayed. Because, um, like I said, you know, they know that the most high, he's on his way back. So he going to confuse and get so many people taken out of his sins and his purpose, and away from his statutes and laws and commandments. And once I can slay their minds and pull them away, then I'll, I'll accomplish what I set to do. All right, Eric Cole, 513, your mic is open. Uh, shalom, family. This is Sister Couture. Shalom, shalom. I just want to shalom. I don't know why I even uh, hit one because Sister Malka said everything I was about to say. <laughs> Everything like she read my mind. So I'll uh, put you back on uh, mute, and I'll finish listening to the class. All right, Erico, 803, your mic is open. Go ahead, you're on the air. Yes, Shalom. 
Um, this is Jalen. I know that I missed a lot of calls, but I haven't been working on a new job now, and oh, it gives me the start time. Give me the start time, but it don't give me an end. So sometimes I end up coming in at night or in, in, in morning time, and I leave at night. All right. So it's not fun. I don't like that part. I don't like that part during Sabbath or nothing, but still trying to make the calls as much as I can. And we appreciate it. We appreciate you being here. But, yeah, you know, and that's the thing about it. You know, we're not, we're not, let me say something. I want to put this on the record. We love each other over here. And if it's hard for you all to accept that, oh, well. We love each other over here. And guess what? We, we make our mistakes and we disagree. And we have, my, my grandma say tongue and teeth fall out, but they both need each other. And that's how we do it over here now. And if that's causing a problem, then everybody needs to do some self-examination as to why that's the problem with you because we're not fighting with each other. We're not arguing with each other, and we support one another over here. So and you that, know that's one how thing we do it. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Sister, one thing I wanted to say with that, and I heard, hello, Sister Malka, I haven't heard your voice in a while, but one thing I wanted to say in relation to Sister uh, Malka's statement, uh, the Willie Lynch is just such a powerful piece to be debunked or to be overtaken or to be broken up and, and um, solve each piece of the pu- puzzle where they cut us up. Because the black woman, there was a breaking process of the female in that. And that breaking process of the female, it, it is just, oh, my goodness. I mean, we, we could have a, a, a whole series of shows on just yes. that alone. So I'm, I'm saying to you that some of the things that we don't know, we have to bring it into perspective because there is a proper perspective for the Willie Lynch letter. I don't want us to stand behind it as the only excuse, but I'm telling you, it was one of the more powerful psychological warfare pieces that's ever been done on anybody in the world on planet Earth. So it, it, is, uh, it, it is so destructive, uh, the, the mental uh, weakness and dependency that they placed uh, our people in with that, that I'm going to tell you, psychological warfare is no joke, and, and America it sure does is. it this day. Oh, you know, you, we, some of us, we look at it that no psychology and we, we know the aftermath, but this is a very, very deep issue in our people, and we have to debunk this. We have to put this up front and tear it apart piece by piece, line upon line, so that we can uh, put our people back together again. Because huh? Humpty Dumpty done fell off the wall, for real. That is not no joke. And it's not just her. And I guess from, from a woman's standpoint, from a black woman's standpoint, we have to learn to watch what we say. You can't say everything you feel. And, 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 in, and in terms, you have to look at yourself, especially when you're angry. Sometimes it's best to just walk away from the situation and don't say anything until you put the person that you are angry with in front and learn how to cater your, your words very, very carefully because we have a tendency to, to tear people down. And I'm just going to be honest and just up front with it. We have to learn how to change those things about who we are because it's not going to get us anywhere anymore. It doesn't work anymore. It's not acceptable anymore. It doesn't matter what the what it was or what it got you kicked off or what triggered it, it's not working any, especially not over here. Because the one thing that I am a, a stickler about is everybody has a right to their choice. Everybody has a right to make the choice that they want to make. And, and just because I disagree with the choice you make or you disagree with the choice I make, it doesn't mean we stop loving each other. And we, like I said, we have to learn how to watch what we say because our tongue can be real sharp. It can be real sharp. Mm-hmm. And, and guess what? And we're not, a lot of us are just not feminine enough and soft enough to take the time and say, well, maybe I shouldn't say that. Maybe that's just not, maybe I should take the other person's feeling into consideration. Even though I'm hurt, maybe I need to just fall back and not hurt anybody else. 
<laughs> but we lash out, and it's something that we've got to stop doing. We, I'm talking to the women. We've got to stop doing that. That's not going to work. So if she does it with me, nine times out of ten, because she doesn't really know me. So if she, if she felt comfortable with doing that with me, then who else do you do it to? It's but do you understand? Anybody comes in her pathway. And that brings They get chewed up. Anybody come in her pathway, she she chewing them up, cutting them up, and spitting them out. Like it's just nothing. And it's unacceptable. That's not how we heal our, our women. That's not how we're going to get the women of Israel together to understand our role because we can't do that anymore. It's unacceptable. Brother, Brother Emmanuel, I'm sorry. Yes, what I was going to say in that is when you put black woman out front, she is made to be strong, okay, very strong, because she's had to be independent. But the, but the black female in her natural state, uh, she is dependent upon the black male. But when we as men have not stood up for sisters, well, that's another thing. So, you know, it's, it's going to take a lot of work. It's not a lightweight thing I'm talking about here. And that's why I brought that up and I picked up and hit one. When you had this, I've been waiting on this one because <laughs> I'm a study this stuff. You know, we, we've been all over this. And we've had these conversations, and it's a lot of our brothers and sisters that feel, well, that was then. And they don't understand the mental cruelty and the yeah. anguish that's generated in that genocide and apartheid and all these things you look at and talk about in South Africa where, you know, they're overcoming some things. And I hear brothers and sisters, I was shocked, are moving to South Africa, and I wanted to know what was that about. So, you know, as we look and study that process, you know, and there they don't have jobs like we do here. So they all over the Internet, but they learn how to make a, a, a couple of grand on the Internet or a couple of hundred dollars where they can live. So we can learn from each other's cultures and, you know, the people who have a true identity of self, you know, they still had their community intact, even though Nelson Mandela was in prison all those years. But, you know, we can learn from the other cultures of Earth that are similar or people who look like us. You know, the experience of the Hebrew Israelite is a totally different experience than anybody else in the world. And Yah has has said, no other nation have I known. So even though we can identify and learn from those nations, we know Yah has our back and he's going to make us sane again. But that doesn't mean we sit on our hands and we just allow jealousy, uh, vindictiveness, anger, hate-mongering, and all that just to, you know, just to exist. You know, we, we have to help each other through this. And how we help each other is maximum confrontation of these exactly. things, you know. Oh, hallelujah. I agree with you 100%. And guess what? It has to be a topic that people don't want to talk about because the board is lit up. This board is lit up where, you know what I'm saying, that these are issues, these are the real issues that we have to deal with, the, you know, up close and personal issues that we have to deal with within ourselves because this is all a part of repenting. All of this deals with repenting, and we have to understand that you have to watch what you say, and when you feel like you want to be vindictive or verbally abusive or tear down someone with your mouth because you're angry, you have to ask yourself, why? Why, why do I react the way that I react, even though I'm mad? Because you can be mad. The Bible said be angry, but say not. So you can get angry, but it's like why do I viciously attack people when I'm angry? You know why? Because you and, and that makes me feel good to feel like that I have said and done those things. Because, like I said, if that's how she came at me, is that how you come at your children? Is that how you talk to your husband when you get mad? Because we know you don't talk to your boss like that when you go to work. Exactly. You're your best <laughs> Independent black woman is a very, very powerful thing when she oh, takes oh. that independence and she backs up a man, that man can go to the moon and back with his self-confidence. So I'm saying we've just got to channel some things to turn this around so we can, and this is all a part of recouping our power, but that's the reason we all have to cry out as a family. 
you know, it's the individual thing. Of course, we all pray and we're encouraged to pray unceasingly. But when a community, when a culture cries out the way we're talking about coming together, that cry out is heard and it has just a special place in the, in the heart of Yah. And the, the sooner we do that, the better, so that we can all humble ourselves and get him to turn back to us and heal our land and hear us, hear the spirit of each and every one of us one by one. Hallelujah. Let me, uh, Eric Code 702, you might be go open to put you on the air. Like it's going to go down. This yeah. is the best one. Well, and see, I didn't. Uh, I owed is what I heard. But here's the thing. A lot of times you have to. <laughs> you have to. Hello, we you got have too to many get your, talking. Hello. Uh, area code 702, your mic is open. Okay, hold on. Let me get to a place where I'm, I'm, I'm in a store, so. Oh, okay, okay. Let me get to my car. All right, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm right here by my car. Let me get in here because i got to say this. Okay. okay. All right. Um, thank you so much for this conversation. I'm telling you, I pray for this because I had a situation that happened this week. Um, it's not exactly with me going off on another Hebrew Israelite, but I did use my sharp tongue. Okay. And it was in, at a meeting. Oh, Lord. I feel bad mm-hmm. about saying it, but it was at a meeting. Um, and majority of the people there were Jewish. Okay. And um, they were cutting at me. Okay. So constantly. If I said, oh, well, how about we try? No, that's not a good idea. And, oh, how about I did? And it just got to me, and I said, you know what? I'm done. So they went, well, no, no, speak your mind. I'm like, no, I have nothing to say. No, 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 speak your mind. No, I have nothing to say. No, 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 speak your mind. So I spoke, and it came out, and it was cutting. And I knew it, and I, you know, I repented. But at the same time, I'm like, not sorry that I said something. Um, later on, I had a meeting this past Thursday. I am on the board of an HOA, and this was a, I'm also the liaison to this committee, this social committee. So the young girl in her 20s comes back, tells the board, rather than the board come to me and say, let's hear your part, this, that, and the other, they had at our meeting, they took me off of the social committee, put me on the safety committee, and it was all done behind the scenes. I always feel like they're doing this behind the scenes, and I've been asking yeah, please just kind of show me how to handle this. I, I'm repenting because I know I could have gone about it probably differently, but nonetheless, it was there. It, it, so I, I guess I'm taking it in a little different direction in that okay. the, the cutting tongue when you're dealing with non-Hebrew Israelites as well. Um, Brother Emmanuel? I am here. Yes. I was taking my off mute, if if you and I were on a couch and, you know, back in the days when I did the mental health counseling, we would say to you as counselors, they taught us to tell the public, don't give away your power. Because when you give away your power and they know that they can undercut you and place you in a position where you're powerless, you know what I'm saying? And I always tell people, save enough power to get off the floor when they knock us down because, you know, we're in, in uh, the daughter of Babylon here, and we're going to get knocked down most days. And I'm going to tell you, the, the people that don't get knocked down are the people who go to work and say, I expect this to happen. And you have to be, as a Hebrew Israelite, a person who expects the unexpected all the time. You have to have contingency plans upon contingency plans for what if this happened because we have to be smarter than them to protect our jobs and our positions in life, okay? And that's what I was alluding to when I said the power of the black woman, men need that. You know, it really helps the man to recoup his power. And even though in the Willie Lynch letter they took the power 
uh, and made the female. They just broke the female into just so many pieces that the, the, the black female is so fragile that it is difficult to keep our black females in relationships of any kind. Now, I'm going to get some sisters I know going to throw some stones at me on this, so I, I, I keep a hedgerow in front of me of, of prayer, okay? So if they're thrown, throw them. But my biggest concern with our sisters is that tongue, the other nations, we're not so much worried about that as long as you're protecting yourself in your job, keeping some power to be you. But with our brothers, lighten that tongue so that the brother can be the man he needs to be. Because just like I say, the sister was broken, okay, in the slavery times, the man more so. Because the woman saw the man hit with a bullwhip. Okay? And when you see a man hit with a bullwhip to the point of almost killing him, that was the breaking process, well, a lot of times they didn't have to hit the woman. How they got to the woman was through her offspring. So I, I hope I'm, I'm answering your, your question to make a statement by saying just keep enough power, and that's all of us, to get up off the floor when they knock you down or when they invalidate you because it's going to happen. And, and then okay. I'd like to share something with you, too. Um, I was in a situation at my job, and there was a, one, of our, one of our people. He's unconscious, but we talk all the time. And it was around 4th of July, and um, he asked me, he said, did you celebrate 4th of July? I said, I don't celebrate the holiday. He said, what, you didn't celebrate the, 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 uh, the uh, Star Spangled Banner, the 4th of July baseball? I said, don't forget apple pie. And he laughed, and he walked away. Well, the lady who was sitting next to me was of the other nation, and I guess she was offended because we were not uh, expounding on the 4th of July the way that we did. And she says, uh, we, we had a conversation about something, and she says, well, why don't you sing to us? Mm-hmm. You know, in other words, entertain us, nigga. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay? But you know what I did? I held my tongue. At that moment, because, see, I'm, I'm like you. I can go there. When I tell you I can go there, right. Y'all, me, mm-hmm. I can go there. Yaina Israel can go there. You know, but I held my tongue. And in the process, I began to pray under my breath like, y'all, just give me the strength to keep my tongue. And I, I kept my tongue, and it got quiet. You know how people know they wrong when the whole room get quiet? It got quiet. You know, and from that point, she knew what she did. Like like Brother Emmanuel said, I didn't I didn't give her my energy because I could have went all the way there, but I guess what I wouldn't have had anymore. I wouldn't have had my job. You understand what I'm saying? So sometimes when yeah. you get those situations and they digging at you like that, and you know they digging at you, that's when you got to pull from the ruach, and you got to hear. Sometimes you just got to keep your mouth shut. And normally I do. I, I have been in that position for over two years. I have, this was the first time that had ever happened. Normally, I, I hold my tongue. I mean, uh, I believe Yah took me through a period where he was teaching me how to hold my tongue. I think mm-hmm. what got to me more than anything, and I'm trying not to cry, but I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm getting it from them. I'm getting it from them. I'm get, I, and then I go to work. Uh, well, I, when I say I get it from them, this is where I live. And then I go to work, and I work in the in urban community, and I get it from them. Um, and, and when I say them, I mean they're unaware. And so you know, they're still living life off of I got to stab you in the back to get what I want. That, so, yeah. you know, and I have to smile through all of that. And... I don't have, there, there's, there's no community here that i found where I get to commune with people. This is it for me. Your program, this is it for me. Well, we're here. And I just grow tired. I, I know you guys. I just, just tired. I know, but it's going to be all right because you have a community that loves you and we're here. That's what this is all about. That's why we do this. 
And that's why we're here, just to tell you to hold on, because I understand everybody feels like you feel right now. And men and women, we all tired of it, but it's always hardest at the end. You know, and you just got to hold on and just be here, because we're here for you. You know, and, and like I said, my phone number is there. If you need to talk, my phone number, you can call me. I'll give it to you right now. And when you're in those situations, you can be, ring me up and be like, look, I need to talk. You know, I'm in a, I, need, I need some prayer or something because we have to be able to carry each other through this. We're not going to make it out by ourselves. we got to make it with each right. other. You understand? That's, what it, that's why we don't tear each other down. we got to be able to build each other up because you can't build and tear down at the same time. Right. Can I say so, this to Mr. as well? Because, you know, this spiritual warfare, they don't look at it this way because the demon seed, you know, this demonic spirit in these folks, it, it is a serious game that they're playing. And yeah. in all this warfare, they, if they can break you as a woman, okay, then they're going to also break the male. But the unfortunate part of all of this is our sisters, y'all, have been out on the front line so long. You know, we're just thankful that our, our the, the 400-year, you know, uh, captivity is ending. And this show is giving folks hope because it's kind of the beacon of light, you know, just like a, a ship. You know, we're ships out here and we're trying not to run ashore. You know, we're trying to stay afloat and just keep this thing moving, all of us. But if you understand that their game is to break you down mentally, then they've won. But what yeah. we do is we humble ourselves in prayer, and as we come on these shows and as we hold hands, one thing in particular, when I went to the, to the uh, nation State of the Union address, there was so much love, dear sister, in the room you know, we might all get on here and say an outsider might hear us kind of because our views are different, because our upbringing is different, but there was so much love when we met face-to-face, -face, I'll never forget that. I'll always remember Sister Gaina's smile and, and Brother Adonai, you know, eating his uh, French toast, you know, at the restaurant and, and, and talking to me at the same time while he was chomping down when I, I wanted a piece, but... He knew it, but he, he finished it without sharing it. But right. my, my thing is with all of us, when we can come together and have love in a room like that, then we know our true nature, our true state is love, all of us. But we've right. been so beat down by these jobs and by this other nation that sometimes we barely have enough energy to go home, watch TV, you know, and that's when we tell folks, hey, just turn the TV off when you get home. You know, it's okay to have a glass of wine. You know, we, we yeah. do that at Shabbat sales, but it's okay to just mellow out and relax and, yeah. and do the thing you know to do to, you know, to just have a few of the uh, creature comforts that can make you relax and refresh and get ready for the next day. Because what is it? Uh, Yah says, be still and know that I am. Because for all of us in stillness is where we heal. And when I would have people come into the mental health sessions, I'd know they had not been in stillness. They had so much confusion and turmoil from the kids, from the job, from the supervisors, from going home on the bus or on the, uh, you know, on the transit system or whatever. I mean, everybody is in an uproar because they all, it's enough A whooping out here to go around a hundred times for everybody. And they, they butts whoop too. Well, they're going to bring it to work, and who are they going to put it? They're going to put it on who they think is a weaker vessel, but we are not weak. Y'all didn't make us weak. We get tired because of the burdens we have to carry. But with us, this, uh, this outpouring of love and sharing and fellowship that we have, even on this program, I feel it, and it rings through. That's, that's why some of us are calling in today that are working on some of these issues with other people. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So it, it is. Um, we glad that you called. Let me. I want you to email me at the Yehuda Project at gmail dot com, and then you. We'll. I'll send you my phone number because that's what we have to do. We have to be there for one another. We need to start praying with one another. And in those times, because I'm telling you, I want to let her have it. But you know what? I had to. I had to hold my tongue because 
one thing that I do when I get through that, I just look at them and say, it ain't going to be long now. <laughs> I do. I look at them and I remember the scriptures, and I be like, it won't be long. Now you have no clue what's getting ready to come down the pipe. You have no idea what's getting ready to happen. And not that I want revenge. Don't get me wrong. That's not my desire to do revenge. But when you're arrogant and you think that you, it's going to always stay the same, you're in for a rude awakening. So that that's the thing that keeps me stable and it keeps me at an even keel, and I try my best not to let anybody take me there. Um, hold on, let me get this mic open. Eric Code 504 Six or did you have anything else you want to say, 702? Um, no, I'm sending you an email now, uh, and, and I'll talk to you because I, 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 I have to, I feel like I have to address this, and I will do that in writing with them because okay. my, I, I felt like, I felt like the room of them, the aura was like, let us put this nigga in her place. She oh, oh, stepped her bound, you know, oh, oh, and I, and I, there, something similar happened before. And I turn the other cheek, so to speak. I I have no more cheeks to turn. I have to address this, and they have to know because I don't respond doesn't mean I don't see. So um, that yeah, I will do it. I I will definitely do it in a professional way, but it needs to be done. And and that's all I have to say. I'll go back. And on then and on the other end, we have a, a young lady on here that is a. Uh, she is an attorney that deals with employment issues, uh, and she's an Israelite. Um, Sister Davida, if you had to give her some advice, what would you tell her? Uh, I would document. Shalom, everybody. I would document, document, document. Um, go back as far as you can remember encountering any problem. Um, and... I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't necessarily respond right now until you've gotten all your thoughts together and you have all the information in front of you because the most profound thing that you could do is to go to the EEOC and let them sort that out for you. If this is discriminatory behavior, then there are, you know, there's the, uh, the, um, the EEOC, there are anti-discriminatory laws and, you know, practices set up. Uh, there's other federations that deal with labor as well. So you don't have to necessarily go up against them by yourself. I'd be more than happy, you know, listen to everything that you have. I've put together EEOC cases before um, and yeah. done, you know, investigations and stuff like that. And I could tell you, you know, straight off, and, and another thing to do, if this is causing you some anxiety, nothing is more favorable than a person who had to go seek psychological assistance because of the anxiety they created for you. So that, that's right. another um, thing that you can do to arm yourself to have some a professional, a documented professional to talk to about this. So when you do present a case, you have everything that you need and you try to you know, deal with the anxiety and the drama that it caused you personally by doing that. But I just wanted to say in response to how you feel, I'm going to tell you, Sister Yaina is a prayer answered for me because I have gone through the same thing. I have felt the same way many occasions, and this is my outlet. This is where I call to talk to my family, to listen to my family. Do I agree with everything that's said? No, but I respect him. And I, you know, there's so much hurt in our community, hurt that we don't even know that we have. You know, things that we carry, uh, yeah. that we think that we let go, that we don't realize that we're still holding. And if you could hold on to after uh, the Most High forgives us after this 400 year sentence is up, things are going to turn around anyway. Because he That's said it would. So just hold on. Um, if anybody learned to put a cork in it, it's me. That's what Diana could tell you. It's going to be all right. Just hold on. Just hold on. Yeah. And look, and look at what the nation, look at what we have here. You know, like I said, we have business professionals 
that have become conscious that Yah has brought together to help us to get through this. And this is what we need. That's what I'm saying earlier. We don't need to tear each other down. Let's help each other because everybody needs some help. You know, and this is just amazing and magnificent that we are able to do this today to each other, to be a sounding board and to be able to encourage and hold each other up because we have to in this day and time. It's so much against us. Yeah. So much. So, you, like I said, yeah. I will definitely get you, email you back after the show. And, you know, if, if we need to come together and on a conference call and you get the things that you need to get from her, we can work it out and do whatever we need to do and then go from there. Okay, I, I'm sending you the email right now. <laughs> All right, no problem. So, you know, this is this is good because look at what it has produced. We've come together as a people. We've created solutions. We're not dealing in the problem, but we cre- we, we're acknowledging the problem, but we're dealing in the solution because you've got to learn how to work. You've got to learn how to live in Rome, you know, in Babylon. And, you know, we need the jobs because that's what feeds us and pays our bills and pays the things that we need. So, you know, you have to conduct yourself a certain way and be able to, t- to take on the arrows and all of the bricks that they throw at you and the words that they throw at you and all of that, you know, and, and try to do the best you can so that you can survive, especially when they know you conscious. That's a whole nother area right there. When they know you conscious, you know, so it's a lot, but we're making it through, and we're going to continue to make it through, and y'all is going to continue to bless us that we do make it through, but we need each other. It's simple as that. You can't do this by yourself. We need each other. That's correct, and, you know, you, you're going to get it from our own nation. You're going to get it from the other nation. But here, I don't ha- I don't get it. I don't have to. It, it's not introduced here. Everybody's respectful. You know, we argue our points. We disagree and agree to disagree. But we don't have to come here and take it to. This is the place that we won't find that. Yeah. And I've always been taught that when you come home, home is supposed to be the place of safety. When you're around family and you're at home, when you're around your family, that's supposed to be where you can say, no matter what go on outside of that world, when I shut that door and I'm at home, I know I'm around people that love me and they're going to help to encourage me to be the best me I can be. You know, and we have to learn how to do that, too, because some of us tear down at home. Some of us put our children against each other at home. Some of us compete, have our children competing for love at home. And it should never be that way. The home should be the place where you know when you come in and shut the door that you're going to get the love and support that you're supposed to get and, and, and have to go out there and fight that big, bad world after it's over with. That's how it's supposed to be. Can I say something? Yes, ma'am. Um, listen to what the, uh, the young ladies are saying. I think it was Erica 702. And like she's saying, I know I, I could hear her brokenness. I could hear her pain, her hurt. And like she's saying, you know, one thing is getting out there in your workplace and you're hurt and you're being hurt by, you know, the people that you work around. But then when you come into the awakening and you come into the different groups, and then the people in these different groups begin to act like the world, you know, act like the workplaces. They, they treat you so horrible. They treat you so bad. And they turn against you. They say all kinds of evil things, you know, when, you, when you're supposed to be in the truth and in awakening. And they're acting no more than the people that you work around, the people in the world. And you just like, where else can I go? Where else can I do? And I have discussed this with you before, so to all you know, and I was telling you, I have been in that place where I have been hurt. It's like they're thrown away, people fighting in the law, and just awakening. They're fighting with one another. They're saying things. They're coming at you and everything. And I have gone through different groups to different uh, camps and different places, and it was just horrible. And I had a horrible experience. And as I told you before, when y'all, he brought me in front of you. It's just like he brought me to a place where I can find peace, a place where I can find refuge, a place where I can find love. And just like what she was saying, she had go, you know, this is her last chance. This is her last time. But he, look how he works. He seemed a broken one over here because they know where they can find peace and love and shelter. 
and they're going to find the truth. And I, and I told you before, I thank you so much. I think this a whole form. I think everyone over here, but we can be us. We can be a family. We can be a people where we love each other, support each other, care about each other. Each other. After we've been thrown out in the mud, hurt by our brothers and sisters out there, he give us now a place that we can come for refuge and love and comfort. And I want to thank you and, and reform everyone of my family members on here. This has been a place where I have learned and have grown more than ever since I came here in October. And I want to say thank you to every single one of you, and I love every one of you so much. And I love the truth that it, and the love that is shared on, on this on, on this forum, and I want to say thank you all. Hallelujah. Praise the mighty God. You know, love is, love is the key. That's the key. And like I said, we don't know how. We're learning how. You know, to love each other and not tear each other down because it's not what it's about. We love each other in spite of what you believe, you know, because the belief, your belief is going to gonna affect you and only you, but we feel family at the end of the day. And that is what I was trying to get Israel to see when I would run up against the different groups. I said, but we feel family. We still come from those 12 brothers, even though we disagree with everything and some things in the Scripture, we still blood. We family. So we have to learn how to be a family, and, and this is how we learn, you know, and individually we take those things back to our, 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 our immediate family and begin to change the way we act because we, got, we have to learn how to forgive each other and we have to learn how to move forward. And where we'll be, we we be there for each other. I had my days, too. I'm telling you, it was like, why don't you sing for us? And, man, I'm t- it took all. When I tell you all, I mean all that I had. But you know what? Sometimes I just revert back to the scriptures that tell me what the end going to be like. And when I revert back and I think about those scriptures, sis, I smile within myself and say, it won't be long. <laughs> It won't be long. You can just hold on. And, they, you know, they think they get it off, and they're arrogant, and they're smiling and walking past you with their nose up. And I just look at them like, honey, it will not be long. You ain't got to worry about it. Cause, and then you don't have to worry about me. It's somebody bigger and far better and worse than me that's going to come and straighten this out because it's not going to be like this for long. You know, and then we just have to get through this curse because it's still all a part of the curse. It is. It's a part of the curse. And I... And I hear you, and I, and I think one of the other things that's big for me is that evening when I was going through that, and, I, and that was running through my mind, and the biggest thing was I had to keep telling myself I couldn't hate them because I, I sure wanted to go there, but it's like, no, no, we can't bring, we can't bring hatred into this. You have to know, I, and I knew who I was dealing with. Um, mm-hmm. mm, wow. It's and the they arrogance they of them. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's the arrogance. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and you don't have and to hate them. They sure get on my nerves. And I, you know, I'm like, ooh, I'm so sick of these people. But it's okay. <laughs> You're entitled to say they get on my dog on nerves. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And, and 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 also say that it won't be long because that's the one thing that we have is hope. We have an outlet. We have hope. You know what I'm saying? That it's not going to be like this forever. We don't have to change. I mean, uh, train generation after generation after generation after generation after generation anymore to be able to deal with these people. You know, yeah. we train in our generation now how to love Yah, and that's all we required to do. These are His laws, statutes, and commandments. If you keep these, He got you. That is correct. Yeah, no, because He's protecting you. You still got that job. He's protecting you, and He and He got you. And you're gonna be all right. It's gonna be all right. I mean, it is. Yeah. It's gonna be all right. And we learn that, you know, no matter what, he still got us because we his people. We are his people. We are the lot of his inheritance. We are the apple of his eye. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No matter what. No. Mm-hmm. No. Oh, you know, you have to I'm looking. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no. I'm, I'm looking forward to... 
uh, a session. Uh, the brother was talking about a lot of things that the, the, the sister has to deal with. Um, and a lot of a lot of reasons why we ended up in being or forceful or whatever is because um, the black man wasn't there and right. and dealing with that because my I, I have some friends of mine and we had this conversation before about that and uh, some of us have built up um, a wall. Mm-hmm towards black men because we've been let down so much Mm -hmm. Um, by investing uh, only to have them turn their backs on us. Or, you know, we read about uh, a a black man that that throws all the sisters under the bus. Mm -hmm. But you don't see other races doing that with their women. They, you know, they support the women, whether even if they're in the wrong, they support them. And we mm-hmm. seem to be the only race that, that um, the women get thrown under the bus. And I, I don't want to harp on it like it's just just the black men, because it, it goes both ways. But having some type of session where we all get to talk about this and get some of these things out that a, a lot of us are holding in. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Whatever day you choose to have that, uh, I'll be right there because, and I'll probably have a lot of people to call in on that one. Okay. Okay. Um, well, well yeah, let me say this to you. Let me say this to you, sis. Um, and I and I want to put this on the record. I've been wanting to do this for a long time, but let me say this to you. And I hope I don't offend anyone, and I'm not trying to offend anyone. But brother Doni and I had a conversation a couple of days ago about dealing with our men who have married other women from the other nations. And, you know, he said, you know, this is the hard stuff. You know, sometimes you have to tell them the hard stuff. And, you know, you have to tell them because this is what the most high, this is the part of the most high's law. And you have to give them the law so that they understand what they are doing because a lot of people don't know what they're doing. And and you know what, because we, we've been in this captivity, you know, they have given us the uh, impression that it's okay to do certain things. As long as it's love, it's okay to do certain things. As long as you love that person, it's okay to do those things. But unfortunately for us, and unfortunately, unfortunately for them, there is a law that the Most High has given us that states that we are not to give our sons to the other people of the other nations, nor our daughters to the other people of the other nations. And one thing I can promise you, and I'm going to make a promise to you on air, I can promise you that the men of Israel that become conscious will come back to the Most High. And when they do, they have to make a choice. Because when you, when you understand that some of the things that we have done, we are breaking his law, they're going to make a choice. And either they will make a choice to come back to the Most High or they will end up being and staying away from our nation. They will not be a part of our nation and be married to the women of the other nation. They cannot have Cut it. off. Cut off. They call that cut off. <laughs> They will not be able to do both. So where it is okay over here to have and to be married to a woman from somewhere else or from some other nation, the Most High of Israel does not play that. So if they're coming back to the Most High, they have to cut that Mm. completely. So our men will come back to us or they will be cut off from the nation. That is correct. That's a promise. Wow. That's a promise. I make that promise to you. As they become conscious, they're going to have to understand that they are breaking the law. 
the most high. And guess what? We're beautiful women anyway. We're strong women. We're beautiful women. You know, and, and the most high is going to make sure that our men come back to us because that's where they're supposed to be. He never intended for our men to ever marry any women, any women from the other nation. And that's not that's not hatred and that's not prejudice because we're in this captivity where we are today. You know what? A lot of people are living under the laws that they, they have presented us. And when you see it on TV now, what do they show us? A black man with a white woman or a black woman with a white man. They're mixing the seed because they know they're going against the law of the most high. We're not supposed to do that. Mm. So all that's going to change. All of that will change. Yeah. That's something I can And And working on rebuilding our trust. Mm -hmm. Uh, A lot of uh, the sisters that I talk to, and I'll, I'll probably group me in. Uh, we we've lost trust. Yeah. Mhm. Yep. That's exactly right. I understand. Mm-hmm. I understand. We were reading that in the apocrypha. I think it was in a. Second Ezra, we were reading that in the Apocrypha. I'm trying to find it now so I can read it to you. But where the Levites had married the women of the other nations, and they brought them with them when they came to Jerusalem to, to rebuild the temple and then to rebuild Jerusalem. And Ezra went before the Most High and repented for them. The didn't he, Brother Donai? Brother the Old Testament. Say that again? That's the Old Testament. Yeah, and, and it's Testament. again the Apocrypha too, Absolutely. And he said, you cannot. And then guess what the Levites said? They said, we will leave those women and the children. They didn't even include the children. And I was like, wow. So we're going back to the nation that he wants us to be because we are a special people unto himself. And he has a certain law and a certain way that he wants things to be done. And we're going back to the way he wants things to be done, and it has nothing to do with this and the way we've been taught to do things over here. It's going to be totally different. So some people will adhere to it, and they will follow the laws, and they'll come back, and some people will stay here, and they will be cut off from the Most High Yah. Hallelujah. It's just simple as that. So you don't have to worry about that. They're coming back to Yah, those that are coming. Because you can't have the best of you can't have the, you can't have the both ways. It doesn't work. You cannot have it both ways. And Brother Donnie, I was like, that's a law, Yaina. They got to keep the law. They can't. He can, they cannot do that. You know. And then the thing about it is, a lot of people are married to them now. They married them now. And he's not gonna make any concessions just because it's you. You know what's really um, ironic is that. So when they when they were getting ready to go back into the land, that was told to them at that particular time. You understand? So when I when I when I say that, I, I, Ezra made it plain. He he made he said it in a prayer to the Almighty God, and they they overheard the prayer, and they were willing to give up their family. You understand? Mm-hmm. Because they were uh, uh, because. That's what got us into the predicament that we are in today is because we didn't do the laws. Mm-hmm. Yes, he did. And uh, let me see. Okay, here we go. It's the first Ezra. It's in the Apocrypha, first Ezra chapter 8, and it's in it's verse 91. It says, it says, while Ezra was praying and making concession, weeping and lying on the ground before the temple, there gathered, uh, there gathered around him a very great crowd of men and women and youth from Jerusalem, for there was great re- weeping among the multitude. Then Shechaniah, the son of Je- Jehiel, one of the men of Israel, called out and said to, uh, to Ezra, We have sinned against the Most High Elohim and have married foreign women from the people of the land. But even now there is hope for Israel. Let let us take an oath to the Most High about this, 
that we will put away all our foreign wives and their children as seems good to you and to all who obey the law of the Most High. Rise up and take action, for it is your task, and we are with you to take strong measures. It says, Then Ezra rose up and made the leaders of the priests and the Levites of all Israel swear that they would do this, and they swore to it. Hallelujah. They're not going to be able to break that law. And you know what? That's how we know that we're in captivity because all of the things that, that, we, that they tell us it's okay to do is going against the law of the Most High God. Because guess what? They called it love. The Most High said no. If we, you have to, not only are you not allowed to marry foreign women, but you're not even allowed to marry outside of your own tribe. That is correct. So you don't have to worry about that. That's going to change if they come with us. I promise you that. He won't make no concessions for it because he's not playing with any of us anymore. Either you're going to do it right or you're going to be cut off. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No. I'm not for the thing. Y'all, he's not playing. He's not playing. No, he's not. He done gave us too much time and too many warnings. He gave us too many chances. And it is time out. He is coming back with this rage and his revenge upon his people. That's why we got to get it right. And we got to return back to his Torah, his laws, his statutes and commandments. And we have to humble ourselves before him, like he said, cry out to him. But he is not playing anymore. No. Now, not to say that he's not going to be fair. I, I want to say this. Not to say that he's not going to be fair, because who knows, the women and the children whom the men have, have had as wives and children, he may allow those people to be the stranger. We don't know. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. How he's yes, going to he he was yeah, almighty but he, said that he was going when he returned out of captivity, he was going to have compassion. Yes. But you, they're not going to be able to be married to him and be husband and wife to him. Now, he may allow them to be the stranger and come along and be saved. You know what I'm saying? Uh, be, be a part of what we're doing. But they can't be married to him. They have to be with us. That's just how it is. That's the hard stuff. That's that's the hard stuff. Those are the hard things that we have to be able to say because everybody is happy and gung-ho about the consciousness of who they are, but when you understand his law, statutes, and commandments, it's the hard stuff. That's the hard stuff that we have to be able to tell people and tell them in love because it's not prejudice. It's just his law. Mm-hmm. Yeah, remember, remember the eighth opened up when, the, and the, when they was in the wilderness. It opened up and swallowed up a lot of people. Yeah, those were the ones that those were the ones that didn't do right, wouldn't conform. Exactly, exactly. So we all have to line up, and it's going to be a very interesting shifting, you know, because all that's getting ready to be over with. I don't even know if if he was going to do something to change the way they think in the first place. Because there's so many of them out there that say, I won't even marry a black woman. I won't even date a black woman. I don't want to have nothing to do with black women. All of that is getting ready to change for the ones that become conscious. And somebody will be like, well, that's the Old Testament. That don't... No, that's the law. That's the law. That's the law. Yeah. Every code 111, your mic is open. Go ahead. You're on the air. Yes. Is, uh, am I being heard? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, that's great. I, I, I think there's something that we really need to think about as a people. Um, remember, Abraham was told for a good reason to seek the perfect will of the Creator. And the reason being is pure and completion in that it only offers one choice. Uh, the Most High is one. can only be satisfied if we have peace. Only offering he will accept. And one of the things that amazes me is this. Stop and consider for a minute. Do we really love Yah? 
if we don't love a pure and perfect truth. In other words, what I'm saying is this. Are we really keeping his commandments, his statutes, his laws, if we don't agree? The first command to Israel is always related to a responsibility on the part of us all. And that responsibility is if, if ever there are contentions or differences of belief and ideal amongst us, differing standards amongst us, because he's not going to accept the multitude of differing standards. That's number one. The first command to the most, uh, most High gave us when we said we shouldn't have any other gods is that we all are obligated, if ever there are differences amongst us, to seek all the truth that is missing and eradicate the negative so the end result can be a holy and consecrated people. At this point in time, in this, this juncture, what I see is our people being blinded by this, this democracy, they call it, that has so much double-mindedness in it that we become acclimated to all these variant differences that are not of the spirit of the one. The end result of it all is this. We need to realize something. We live in a system, we live in a system today that does an insane thing. It protects every lie. It protects every lie and right. gives no honor to the pursuit of a pure, perfect truth. Look at Isaiah 59. It's right there. <laughs> Those who turn toward righteousness, that's all that is divine will, a pure, perfect truth, to truly honor his name. He says they seek to make a praise. Most I was utterly displeased. What about then if we as a people who say we love the Most High, are more concerned about personal interpretations, all of them falling short at this point, quite frankly, more concerned about personal uh, institutions and ideals than preparing for somebody who's going to still judge us according to everything the prophets ever spoke since the beginning. I think we got a serious, serious problem at this point. I agree 100%. I thank you for your comment. And we have to go to that. We have to understand all of those things. Those are all issues that we are going to have to deal with when we come back together as a nation. Those are all the issues of the things that we're going to have to deal with. But he's going to line it up one by one, and we're going to all walk circumspectly because it's going to be what he said it's going to be. And those who don't line up, the rebels, what he say he's going to do to them, Brother Donia? They're going to be cut off. And purging them out, and you won't be here. It's as so simple as that. It's going to be simple as that, sis. So the, the whole, we need our men back and our men, you don't even have to worry about that. That is a given. We don't have that long. All of it is getting ready to line up. Either you're going to, like Brother Donny, I say, and I say it all the time, either you'll get it or you won't. <laughs> it's going to be one of the two. It is. Either you get it or you won't. But you're not going to be able to, like the brother said, you ain't going to be able to straddle the fence no more. This ain't not going to be a democracy. It's not. You know, and all those that sat stand around and all on TV and, you know, they doing all the things. Do whatever, like we said, do your thing because the time is coming where you have to make a choice. And that choice yeah, you're going to make is you're going to determine your life, like your livelihood, whether you're going to make it or not. That is correct. Either you get it or you won't. That's as simple as that. So you don't have to worry about that no more. He's, he's going to take care of that because he's got a people that's going to keep his law, statutes, and his commandments. They're going to do that this time. This time around, there ain't going to be no room for error. Mm-mm. You know what I think? What you say, Brother Donia? No, no, continue. I, no, I was finished. You were saying something. No, I was just saying, don't think that, you know, uh, you understand, see the, see, the things that we're dealing with now, you understand, is not going to be, you understand, it's going to be a whole different program. It's going to be based on the laws, the statutes and the ordinance and the commandments that the law might set aside for us, the 613 laws. If you don't know them, I mean, and they're simple and plain. It's not nothing hard, you understand, it's plain. You understand? And they coincide with us living and not dying. That's, you know, that's what the laws is all about, that we may live and not die. That's right. That's right. That's right. And you know what? We have come up on the last eight minutes of the class. I want to take the time and give everybody encouraging words. Uh, we're going to start with area code 504-702-803. 111, and we're going to go up to Brother, uh, uh, to, uh, uh, 913, 
540-537. We just, I'm going to call them off, and as we call them off, you get a few seconds, just say something, and we'll go from there. Erico, 504. Uh, thank you, Sister Yane. I just want to um, tell everybody we don't have long just captivity is almost over. Just dig in and have hope. That is correct. Eric Code 702. Is she still there, 702? You might have her phone on mute. Yes, I have it on mute. I'm sorry. Uh, I just want to thank you all for just having having this platform for us to come together and be able to to uplift each other. And... Uh, anybody that's listening, I, I appreciate you all for being there. I, I will continue to look to you for strength, and I just thank you. Thank you. Oh, all right, yeah. Eric, oh, you're welcome, Shalom. 803, Eric, 803. Um, Death Brother Jalen, he might have his phone on mute. Eric, oh, yes, one. yes, I'm here. Uh-huh. I was just saying that we, what we talked about today, I just realized that a lot of people that we still go through hurt, and we have to notice is that we kind of live in that. We live in that filth. So that's kind of why we are, are filthy in a way. So we got to be mindful of, you know, the people we hang around with, air we breathe and all that. So until we make it out this captivity. All right. Erico 913. Finish our blessings when we allow jealousy, envy, and hate and vindictiveness to rule over us. But we have already been told that Yah will allow our enemies to be our footstool. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here's 540. 540. Here's 540. If your phone's on mute. Thank you. It won't be long. Let's just hold on. We don't have much further to go. Hallelujah. Eric Code 337. Yeah, I just want to say that um, we're in the last days and the most highest point of spirit out on this elect. Not not on misfits and degenerates and okie dokes. Hallelujah. All right, Eric Code 352. Yes, I want to leave this script with you. Be steadfast, unmovable, always founded in the work of Yahuwah, that your labor be not in vain. Hallelujah, Brother Donia. Uh, shalom, shalom, this is Donia. And I wanted to, um, uh, you know, I concur with everybody what they said. And I want to say that 19 more months, that's what we got. 19 more months as opposed to 400 years. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then on that note, from Yaina, we say shalom, shalom to everyone. We're glad that you joined us. And we will see you Tuesday night at 6.30 p.m.